Hey, Michael Brandt here with Garage Bound LLC in Chattanooga. I wanted to thank uh, Adam over at A-Bomb 79 for hosting our shop tour and for the opportunity of um, getting a lot more uh, followers on my YouTube channel. So since I have a bunch of new followers, I wanted to share one of my current projects with you. This is a replica replacement train door for a 1940s stainless steel passenger observation car for the Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum. It's been one of the more challenging product projects that I've taken on. Uh, it's a lot of intricate stuff that has to be just right so that it'll fit inside the, the frame uh, of the train car. Um, one of the most challenging parts of this project is it has a riser that comes up at an angle here. So it's a little taller in the back, shorter on the bottom, but we have concave curves going this way as well as this way. And we got some really thin stainless steel that we're gonna attempt to use our English wheel in, and I'll, I'll post some video of that later uh, to try to get that shape. So I think what I'll do is I'll start with this form here and then see if I can roll the other one. If not, we might have to use our metal shaping power hammer. Might take a couple times, you know, to do it the right way, but uh, I was the craziest one, the only crazy one that would take this project on. A lot of other people were asked to do it and they thought that it was too time consuming or too challenging for them to do. And, and I, I said, sure, I'll try it. So I got the opportunity. Um, it's really cool. I'm gonna come over here for a second um, and show you, come around this way. So originally we were supposed to have had a door off a train car to bring to the shop and to reverse engineer and make it the way uh, the original one was and make a copy of it if, you could, if you'd say. Uh, but that door became unavailable and so we had to go out and field measure the height, you know, the position of the hinges, uh, where the hole is for the back door so that they can run a light in there for the light box, the orientation of the, the window, the height, the width, and then, um, you know, we had to go to the other train door and make these sketches for the top from the side view, you know, and kind of sketch it out and then make a more finite pattern out of that. So as an example, this pattern here ended up being these pieces right in here. So it, one of the most important pieces on this whole project that I really started, you know, they say you have to start at the bottom and work your way up, and that's exactly how this project worked out. So I took a piece of this, this thin wood, and I took a piece of paper, and I went to the train, and I measured the exact area where this door has to fit in. And then after I did it on paper, I transferred it to this piece of wood and I actually held it in there right here to make sure that it would open and close and there would not be any obstructions for the door. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is that this is not perfectly symmetrical on each side. So it has to be uh, less of a cut here on, on your right side that you're viewing so that it would not drag the door frame as the door open and opens and closes. So we got this train door to a certain point and we went and test fitted it on the train and, and we welded the hinges on and it opens and closes perfectly. So we're just doing the final touches on here and I'll show you some of the substructure we built for the back side. Watch out. You can see here that we it's, it's a pretty heavy duty door. We have uh, all this one inch stainless steel 11 gauge tubing to reinforce everything. So I'll get my template here. The template follows everything, everything from the bottom. So we had one here, we had a cross member here, and then we have another one up here. And that kind of stiffens the door this way here. Now, what we're gonna have to do is, you can see on the edge here, if you, if you take the camera here, that we have about a 3 8 piece of overhang. We're gonna have to trim 3 8 inch off all that whole edge before we put our inside uh, piece on. Uh, the other thing that we still have to do is the rubber molding for the window that's going in here is pretty thick so it can't make a 90 degree turn so we've cut these pieces here out that we'll put in this spot here on each side of the one in each corner and then we'll shape them and, and make sure they're all uniform but it'll look good from the inside come look at the outside of the door you know once we have those in there that rubber mold shouldn't have a problem you know fitting around those radiuses there one of the other challenges we had on this uh, were these pieces here because on the outside of the train there is molding that looks like this that runs around the edge and all the way down the train side so once this was once this was test fit we had to make sure that the location of these 
was in the right position so when you're looking at the back of the train, everything's uniform on a horizontal level. And the other thing that we did, I had to make these twice because I didn't realize once the doors closed, these actually sit out further from the door jam. So I didn't want it to come out and then step in and go. I wanted it to come out and look like it was one continued seam. Uh, Steve, Sheet Metal Steve at the Tennessee, Tennessee Valley Railroad Museum's sheet metal shop uh, broke these for me out of stainless. It's like 11 gauge. And then we came to our RM55 Bailey Industrial Roller and we set the set our gauges or set our stops, you know, to where this fit in there really good. And we just rolled it back and forth until we st had that same contour uh, on our template. So I actually used this because everything is that way, and you can see that it, that's pretty close. Maybe the inside radius is a little closer. If the end caps weren't on there, you'd see that it it laid in there perfectly, and that way I knew it'd lay on top of the door. So this is a huge help having a machine like this. Bailey Industrial does a great job sharing our cool projects when we build stuff with it. Um, this here is going to be the inside skin of the door and uh, it, it will have a panel that is removable so that they can get in there and access any light that they put on there for the light box. Um, this, this plate here we rolled on our low sheet roller. This is our low uh, plate roll. And I covered it with heavy duty like uh, butcher paper so that I didn't cross contaminate and get a bunch of carbon mixed in with our stainless. So that's why they're rolled now. This is a really cool machine. It'll do almost six foot long piece of 3 8 plate. So anything smaller of that, you know, it rolls really well. It's a powerful machine you don't want to get your hand caught in for sure. <laughs> so coming back over here. Again, after we had those rolled, you know, we were able to cap the ends and then put it up there and figure out where this goes and the door jam overlaps it. So it's a little wider space here than it is on the other side over here, you can see. So I'm not the best stainless welder in the world, you know, but this is a nice looking little weld here. You know, got some nice colors and I'm hoping that Jody from Welding Tips and Tricks will actually give me some lessons one of these days when we have time to get together. But uh, there's some nice welds down here. I'm not sure if the camera can see it. We'll end up filling this patch panel back in before it's over. On the inside here, we have a piece of quarter inch plate running the length of the door so that uh, we wouldn't have any warpage or any kind of bending or moving parts uh, when all the weight of the door is hanging off onto that edge. So it's been a lot of complicated uh, trying to figure out how to do this, you know, lots of different ideas to, to get to the end result. This one's pretty cool up here. We had these pieces that needed to go out because of the radius, but then also go that way. So just as a basic frame, I took some uh, 11 gauge uh, flat bar stainless and, and, and cut it every half an inch or so, so that I could work that material where it needed to be. I'll go back through and weld these closed and then uh, sh uh, shape them and, and clean that area. Ultimately, all these welds are gonna be passivated. The whole door will be passivated and polished in the end. So. All these pretty welds and stuff that I, you know, try to do uh, end up going away. But so that cover sits right about here, like this, about that tall, and goes right, but butts right up against that for that other radius piece. So I don't need to, I don't need to do it twice. There's no sense in filling this in just to put another piece on top of it. So it will remain open in here, and then that top cover will go on there eventually. But uh, down here, I'll move the door a bit. Down here's a light box. I'll go ahead and just look at the light box for a second. Excellent. So the light box will go here. We had sheet metal Steve form some of these pieces of stainless for us that will cut in miter and trim. The, the cover will be like this over that, and it'll be all four corners around it in a frame. And then on this side, we'll have a hinge. <coughs> a stainless steel hinge that welds to this and our and excuse me I had something in my throat for a minute but that stainless steel hinge will weld over here to our frame and then we'll have a latching system here so that it opens and closes We'll also have a hole here 
and locations for four lights to be placed. That way, whatever artwork they choose to put over that will shine through it and we'll have an access door uh, on the back side to service it. Or they could just open it here and service it too, once we have the lid made. But it's been a fun project. It's been very time consuming. I probably won't sign myself up to make a second one. Uh, but once it's done, uh, it'll look really great and I should get you know a lot of cool publicity off of it saying, oh, he can make the train door, but uh, it's so time consuming. I have to be the only one to, to doing the work. Um, and so therefore, my undivided attention is very limited with all my other responsibilities in business, but it'll, it'll be a fun token, token kind of uh, project. So stay tuned, we'll, we'll post some more videos once we get further along down the road and then we'll post a finale video uh, on YouTube once it's done and in the train. Thanks for watching.